So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. And welcome back to another one of those podcasts under the stairs, Silent Night in PCs episodes. This is where we take the movie, Silent Night from 2012. We break up into five minute reviewable chunks for your listening pleasure. I get guests from around the world to join me on those five minutes and then what I do is I muddle up the release order non-linear, ladies and gents, so we can sit down and confuse each other royally on the countdown to Christmas. Joining me on this episode, discussing minutes 15 through 20, is none other than me. That's right, this is a double Duncan episode. Very much looking forward to this. This 15 minutes will start at a deputy at the desk with a newspaper, and it will close at the 20 minute mark with um, the receptionist woman, Brenda, uh, radioing in to the deputy saying, Base Patrol 1, Deputy Brannamore, come in. That is your five minute window. Um, let's get into it, shall we? These episodes with me are nice and short and I love it for being that way. This is a great one though, so we have prime, um, we have prime bad Santa in this one uh, with some really great dialogue. This one starts with the deputy at our desk. She's holding her newspaper and she's speaking to Brenda, the receptionist. She says, can you think of a nine-letter word for a six-sided item for my crossword? Of course, Brenda is a child of the, you know, the digital age and she's like, I'll Google it. The deputy's like, what? No, the whole point is to figure it out yourself. And Brenda quite rightly calls her out and says, why are you asking me then? Just then, Giles, the most useless cop in the world, that is a trend, ladies and gents, with these NPC series so far, is useless cops, and Giles is right up there. He comes walking at the station like fucking bad lieutenant, and the deputy says, oh, it's so nice of you to show up, Giles. And Giles says, don't tell me, I missed a bank house or an alien invasion. He's been all sassy. Brenda says, if I can manage to put my makeup on, blow dry my hair, and get here on time, and Giles is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The truth is, I had to stop at the store and get something for you ladies. The deputy says, Christmas presents from you, really? Then Giles holds mistletoe above his head. Everyone collectively gags. Giles says, uh, don't rush me, form a line. The deputy says, oh, after you've been kissing the sheriff's asshole, you're gonna, and then Giles lets out an ungodly sneeze. It's snot right in his hands, phlegm all over the place and deputy says oh god and brenda says no thank you and the phone rings and she answers the phone and says sheriff's department yes ma'am which santa claus ma'am i see we'll send someone right over and then she looks over at the deputy and says you know that traveling santa the one in the square the deputy says yeah what's up 
Brenda says, well, he's been making the kids cry. And the deputy says, what, how? And then, of course, Giles, right in there with a the perfect comment, says, maybe he got a boner. Kids are squirming all over his lap all day. It's bound to happen sooner or later. And uh, the deputy gets up and says, has anyone ever done a background check on you? Seriously? I'll take this one on my own. And Giles is like, what did I say? We transition from the happenings of the station to the town centre where we are in the midst of SantaCon in the small town of Cryer. Um, everyone is dressed like Santa, the deputy's walking up, everyone is saying hi deputy, hi Aubrey and she's like hi and she's wishing everyone a Merry Christmas and then we get a first glimpse at one of our many red herrings in this movie, this one, Jim Epstein, the Santa Claus um, truth teller, let's call him that. And we walk up and uh, he's like that, so what's your name, partner? And the little kid goes, it's Timmy, it's always Timmy, it's always Timmy. And Santa says, Timmy, well, to be honest, Timmy, I don't think you're going to get anything this year. <laughs> I'm joking, you're going to get everything on your Christmas list. But if the presents aren't under the tree tomorrow, you know what happened, right? Well, see, your parents took them and put them on eBay. That's right, never trust your parents. And that's all I'm going to say on the matter, lest I get in trouble with the police. See, they send people to check up on me to make sure I'm not telling kids the truth about their parents. So don't you go snitching on me, Santa's a little secret. Right? Shake. Alright, superstar, now scoot. And then Timmy walks towards the, the camera and says, Santa sucks. And that's when the deputy walks up to Santa and Santa goes, Well, <laughs> what can I do for you? Um, and the deputy says, I'm Deputy Bradamore. Santa says, I'm Santa. Santa Claus. Uh, the deputy says, do you go by any other names? He says, well, sure. At Easter, I'm the Easter Bunny. On Halloween, I'm Halloweener. An Irish Jewish ghost. Days in between, I'm Jim Epstein. And uh, the deputy says, can I call you Jim Epstein? And he's like, well, you could if you wanted to ruin the childhoods of all these little cute brats waiting in line, looking for reassurance that they're going to have lots and lots of toys under the tree tomorrow. And the deputy's like, oh, a cynical Santa. Cute. And then Santa goes, oh, oh, you're good. I'm going to have to keep an eye on you. And of course, the deputy then says, you're not from around here, are you? It's evident. Uh, but Santa says, no, I'm from up north, a small town, North Pole, actually, and Colorado. The deputy asks him if he moves around a lot, and Santa says, what the hell is this? Why the Inquisition? I have a permit. The deputy says, can I see it? Santa says, well, it happens to be in my journal because I'm a bit of a passionate scrapbooker. Hands the book over, the deputy takes a look. It's full of <laughs> crude drawings and just rants. And Santa says, knock yourself out. For ten bucks you can sit in my lap too. And we'll talk about the first thing that pops up. So what's the big issue? The deputy says, we've been getting some complaints about your behaviour towards the children. And Santa says... Well, if we're talking about that whiny little brat back there, I stand by what I say. I speak the truth. So what do you want from Santa to bring you? A pony? How about a big fucking box of reality? Which is what I ask for every year for Christmas, and I never get it, ladies and gents. I never get my big fucking box of reality. And uh, Tippy says, how about you tone the fuck down? He says, oh yeah? Oh, you oh you do what? You can't revoke my permit. It was issued by Town Hall. And the deputy cuts him and says, it's conditional upon your adherence to public decency. And Santa's like, ooh -hoo. Now I'm scared that the big cop lady knows the letter of the law. So how come you're not at home tonight? By the fire, with your hubby, baking cookies. And she obviously gives him a thousand yard stare saying, what did you just say? And that's when the... The police department, Brenda, radios in and says, Base Patrol 1, Deputy Bradmore, come in. And that is seen. I got a boring five minutes. No death. We got some primo dialogue from Big Jim Epstein, the bad grumpy Santa. But out with that, this was a tedious five minutes that I had to troll through myself and record an episode where I don't get to bounce off anyone and have lots of fun. This is just the perfect Christmas present. To me, isn't it, ladies and gents? Well, there we are. That's literally all I'm doing on this episode. Rocketing right through it. There is an episode of the podcast under the stairs coming every single day. 
of December from the 1st through to the 24th. We ain't keeping you hanging here. There's something to keep you going while you finish off your Christmas presents, you wrap them, you put them under the tree and you grimace, grit your teeth and deal with your family and loved ones. That's right, we're here for you, ladies and gents. So, there'll be another episode coming tomorrow. So until then, take care.